This episode is all about some rules you can use to help identify studies that are likely to be problematic or likely to be good. The first thing I always look at is study size. Study size is one of those cases where bigger is almost always better. The larger the study is, the less likely we are to believe that the observed effect is due to chance rather than the studied feature. So basically the bigger the study, the more likely the results are due to real changes and not just due to random fluctuations. The second thing I look at is study design. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible for the purpose of this podcast. We don't have time to go into every type of study design. There is one important term we want to look for though, and that word is blind. The best studies are almost always blinded. There are two types of blinding, single blind and double blind. In a single blinded study, the subjects do not know what group they're in, but the experimenters do know. In a double blinded study, neither the subjects nor the experimenters know what group the subject is in. Double blinded studies are almost always going to be the best for our purposes. The third thing I look at is the control group. We need a control group that makes sense. For example, there's a bunch of studies on intermittent fasting that compare them to ad libitum eating, meaning eating whatever you want. This doesn't really help us because what we really need is intermittent fasting being compared to just normal calorie restriction. Figuring out what it's being compared to is important for us to figure out what the effect really is. The fourth thing you need to be careful about is what journal it is published in. There are some journals with really lax peer review or that are even almost pay to publish. It can be difficult to determine what journals are reputable if you're looking at a field you're not familiar with. So I recommend googling the journal name and double checking what people say about it before you use it. Finally, I check the effect size. If they are reporting incredible results from relatively small interventions, I get very nervous and wait to see the results replicated. If the effect doesn't seem believable, I don't believe it. So remember, number of subjects, study design, good control, what journal, and size of effect. Using those five tools will help you separate the good studies from the bad.